Okay, now it's playing. I thought I actually played it, but I actually forgot to actually set the damn thing to record video, so I didn't actually start playing. Good thing, because I forgot to switch the light on. Okay, so I'm um, going to get this necklace video out of the way. This is probably not going to go up for another few days, because, of course, you know, with the issues of... Uh, with my upload speed, um, I'm probably going to not have much time to actually, like kill about like an hour or something like that unless I decide to, I don't know, maybe go and get a feed or something like that. I have no idea. So this is definitely not going up immediately after I'm recording it because as soon as I'm done with this, I'm just going to crash because I'm that bloody tired. Um, <laughs> had to go to a psychologist appointment and then go to locals. Um, I was initially planning on playing uh, Dark Lord Noble Knights, but decided to have a bit of fun with Cloudblade. I honestly just wanted an excuse to run Norden because I got a third Odd Eyes tin, and so now I have my play set of Norden. Um, pulled pretty much bugger all from the uh, tin, by the way. I did get a Harmonic and a Stealth, but that's about it. Um, and so I eventually piloted this. I actually came within one play of uh, taking first place. Um, that play ended up getting stopped by a Veiler. That Veiler won him the match, which was rather unfortunate. I was still. Not gonna lie, still a touch salty about it, but I am still gracious in defeat because that was probably the clutchest Valor player that I have witnessed in my life. But with that out of the way, I've gone on a bit too much of a tangent. I'll just get on with the uh, Clown Blade list here. Um, I kind of feel stupid now because I'm running two Jack Damage Juggler. I went into this thinking I ran three, and I think there was like a game which I signed one of these out with that mindset. So I was playing a game with uh, only one damage juggler. I could have sworn to God I was running three, but I've just gone back through my um, side deck in case I may have left one in there, but it's definitely not in there. And I know this is 40 cards because I counted before I did the deck list. So evidently I was running two damage juggler. I think I just didn't want to like... Oh, jeez. I, 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 I honestly don't really know what... Remember now why I cut the damage juggler to two. I think it was just... I think I just wanted to run a few more... Um, traps in the deck, but I think for future builds I might go up to three. Um, I might also try the um, gigabyte um, nefarious thingy blah 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 engine as well, because um, I didn't run that in this deck. Instead, I ran a trap tricks engine, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, two clowns, the clowns do their stuff. One half of the namesake. Uh, two hat tricker, hat trick is just really freaking awesome. Um, good way to search it out. It actually makes for good tribute fodder as well for my um, side deck choices. Um, again, in relation to the Odd Eyes tin, I've pretty much given it away now, but yeah. Uh, three Mathematician. I actually had a plan with this. Since I, since you can tell I'm, I was obviously running Norden, um, I was actually thinking of getting a level three fusion. If I had my fusionist on me, I definitely would have actually put it in and tried to put a Dante into this deck. And... Um, just used its mill power to hopefully get a um, clown or something into the graveyard. That would have been awesome. I mean, yes, it would have been luck-based, but today's tournament was pretty much luck-based. I mean, a fun sort of tournament. So I wouldn't have really cared that much. I mean, I'm, I mean, I've had, I, just, I, I did get second, but I'm not going to complain too much about it. But yeah, Mathematician makes the plays um, go off, dumps the, uh, t turn one dumps the uh, blades, and then you can set up and do a, uh, all those sorts of combos. Uh, the Violet Chain is still infinitely better, but we have to make do without it, because, like, I didn't really care about it when it first got banned, but now I feel like it's starting to pit, kind of piss me off. That's the one thing that pisses me off about playing this deck, is just the lack of the Violet Chain. Uh, onto the Heroic Engine, it is the standard course of the three Halberd and 2000 Blades. Three Halberd's just a really awesome special summon and makes even more rank fours possible. Um, again, it, it is, again, um, good tribute fodder as well. Um, and Thousand Blades goes with the uh, Trick Clown. You special summon it when you take damage, and that's exactly what Trick Clown does when you special summon it. So that is the name. That That is where the nature of Clown Blade comes into play. You basically set those two off and get um, bunches of rank fours. You can only use each of them once per turn, though. Um, we then have the Double Mamelio. I was initially running three, but I did not want too many normal summons in the deck. And the, this is meant to really just be a sort of supporting engine. It's not meant to actually sort of play um, absolutely um, core role in the deck. 
I feel like like core role and vital role, I feel like are two different things. This is still relatively vital given um given this the um support that this engine gives to the deck. But it's by no means a core thing. You can easily just not bother running Mamelia. I gave it a crack just because I wanted to give the trap hole traps a bit of a go and, and have them just provide a bit of protection. They worked out relatively well. Um, I have three upstart goblins to start the spells. And then I have the three instant fusions. I've only got the two targets though. This is basically just to see it more often. And even then I failed to see it in the first two of my rounds. Just for the record, there was only three rounds today. It was meant to be four, but um, T.O. kind of messed up and only gave us three and then went to top four. Um, but yeah, I never actually saw that in the first two rounds. And the first time I actually did finally see it, I had the setup ready to go and I was met with a Vanities, which was really, really saddening. Very next turn, he did his own play. It was just like, really? It was kind of annoying. Um, I then have Foolish, Soul Charge, right Geki as the standard staple stuff. Uh, then for the traps, I have the two Fiendish. I have the two called the Haunted. This is really, really awesome for Mamilio. The stupid thing was, when I actually put the um, Trap Tricks Engine in the deck, I also had the idea of just getting it back off Norden and blowing shit up. Completely forgetting that Norden negates the effects of the monster that it summons. So I was a bit of a moron there. Had I known that, I probably would have actually run three of these. Because it would have also helped a lot with um, clown and um, even even halberd because it just it's good for just getting a good speed stick. Um, Thunder King also eluded my mind. Thunder this that that my mention of the Thunder King, um, like that was this was literally the first time I even thought of Thunder King at all today. It never actually crossed my mind over the entirety of the day, and only just came into my head just then. Um, 2D prison for just the battle trap uh two mind crush i got actually round one i hit uh rampenga with this i actually ended up because he added it back to hand through counter hawk and then i hit it and turns out i actually hit two so it was really freaking amazing um i don't think i saw it any other time except i think i think i mind crushed i think it was like a, oh what was it was it like a hat trick or something? I can't remember, but I know I'd mind crushed at least one more time in the tournament. Um, so one of us is the Jar of Avarice. I did get this off and it wasn't too bad. Um, I think it was the top four match. I was playing Tellers in the top four matchup. Um, for my trap hole lineup, I'm running one time space, one botless, one trap tricks and one void trap hole. Uh, this I felt was just sort of the random versatile. This does this, that does that. And just pretty much pick the ideal um, number for the situation. It is interchangeable. I do have a couple of trap holes in the side deck, in the side deck, so um, I can easily interchange if I needed to. And then lastly, warning and emptiness. That rounds the main deck off. Uh, once I have sorted these traps back into their proper order, and then put them on the back there, I can go onto the uh, extra deck. Planners is immediately coming out because I don't think I've ever actually made Planners off of the Ptolemyus before. So I don't really see much of a reason. Can we actually see that? Yeah, okay. Sweet. Just make sure there isn't any glare because there's a bit of glare from my point of view, but not from that, obviously. Um, so I'm probably just going to stick with the diamond if I'm going to do um, Ptolemyus plays. I mean, until such time as Cyber Dragon Infinity comes out. Um which hopefully this will still be around by then because I can definitely see Konami just ban just giving us a big fat fuck you and just banning this before uh, Infinity comes out. Um, but yeah, I'm probably just going to stick with these two. Um, I'll probably cut this and one of the other rank fours to put in the Fusionist and the Dante and give that a bit of a go. I don't think it'll be happening next week because I believe next week is like a Pegasus Challenge thing. Um, and I think it's like the 100 card one where you have to bloody... Um, use a 100 card deck, which is really freaking stupid. Um, then other rank fours, probably just put them. That's all like that. I have Excite on. I have Dark Rebellion. This was one of the uh, pivotal parts of that um, almost map tournament winning play that I did. I uh, used this 
uh, triggered Trick Clown, uh, I triggered the uh, Clown Blade uh, combo again, and then made a Castell. That Castell got Bailed, and so um, it, it and it probably would have not been that big of a deal if I wasn't going up against Shadows, and if said monster that I stole the attack points off was not a construct, uh, which was rather unfortunate. Uh, Heartland Draco, I got game with this once. I think I got it. I think I might have gotten it twice. I remember definitely I in round one against um uh ritual beasts, but I might have, I think I might have done it again as well. I can't remember. Um 101 saw a lot of play, not 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 just for the um sucking up and sucking up and stuff like that, but definitely protection as well. It wasn't too bad. I, I got up I went up against a somewhat more casual player round two. They were playing Rome Mages, so I just went into this and just sat there and protected. Um Abyss Dweller, uh pff. It's a best dweller. I never really summon a best dweller that often. Castell, pretty much as often as 101, really. Um, Rhapsody. Rhapsody is. I sold this once, and I actually had to do this because the Teller player I was up against in uh, top in the top four match was running Wall of Disruption, and he set two of them off, which put both of my monsters to zero. Um, like I had Castell, and I had um, 101. Um, so I was able to switch the Castell into defense mode because it hadn't attacked. Um, then I had to leave the 101 in attack mode with no attack, and I had like fuck all life points left. So I just went into Rhapsody, banished the um, walls just for the just because I was salty, and then just equipped this onto um, 101 just to pro just so that if he summoned something like an Altair, um, like if he summoned just a monster in general, I would not lose to it. Um, he still eventually ended up winning because basically went i like he basically went um sky bridge tried to go into um awesome i veiled i i um vanities and then very next turn he top decked the um awesome and won <laughs> and i had like less than a thousand life points it was terrible i uh, ragnar zero i got out once i actually um knocked over a trick clown with this like they had they put clown on board and so i'm just like okay you know what i'll make ragnar zero blow that up i get the draw off it so very pretty pretty useful um for what purposes of cowboy for game i did this once uh trapeze magician i don't think i summoned this a whole lot i was actually like if i was looking for a 25 beat stick i think i was primarily sticking with um dark rebellion um but the the but the other thing with the, was with dark rebellion is these two pretty much go in sort of hand in hand um in that uh, Dark Rebellion is basically the beast that you can go into if you can't go into this because this needs spellcasters. And if you can even go into both of these, it's ridiculous because if you can just absorb your opponent's monster's attack and then just go into this and let that have a double attack, you may... It, 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 like, if if your opponent does survive, you, they still have to get over the Trapeze Magician and they can't really do a whole lot of damage to you. So, with, with that aside, it's basically um picking up time and just scoop phasing uh lastly just the two copies of norton didn't really need three i thought it was superfluous especially considering i had the um avarice if i wanted to recycle it i think when i actually did do avarice i put this and in an instant and the instant fusion back um so three is not entirely necessary if i was going to run a third target i would of course be running if i can find the damn thing uh I for some reason oh no wait there it is yeah that would be the that would be the third thing like I would cut the uh number eighty just because I don't really think it's that useful as well as the play it is and I put fusionist and Dalatang in there so uh that's basically the definite change that I'm that's gonna happen simply because simply put because I want to give it a go it's silly enough for me to get take a shot at uh and then lastly for the side deck. Uh, two copies of Majesty's Fiend. Um, game two, round three. Um, yeah, round three, game two. I had my opponent under a lock of this and Vanities. Um, he got out of it, though, by decreeing, which was sad. And then he basically just ran over Majesty's Fiend. And so, um, I... Yeah. It was kind of sad to see that decree. I did not expect main deck decree, in all honesty. Um, actually not, it probably was sided because it was game two. It would have been stupid if it was game one because this is a side deck card. So what the fuck am I thinking? Um, but yeah, Majesty's Fiend, 
in that one situation was actually pretty damn useful. It's not too hard to summon either because if your opponent has monsters, you can just um, hat trigger and then tribute for this. Um, or you can uh, assault halberd, tribute for it, um, call the to get stuff as well. Um, instant fusion as well, if to an extent you want to do that. Um, so it, it, it's pretty useful. Uh, to max C. Max C did max what max C does. Um, good draw power as well. I think I did that game too. I got like three draws and that really advanced my game state a whole lot. And I just managed to roll on top of him for game two. Because uh, I think he bricked as well. That's one of the bigger issues. Um, two, of, two of each of the hands. Um, I never actually cited these. I thought that they were going to be pretty damn useful. I probably should have cited them in against Tellers. Um, but I did not. I can't remember exactly what it is that I cited. I think I cited in the Majesties, the Max C's, and I think the MST's. Um, and if I cited these in, I would have had 11 cards, and that would have been far too much for me. I don't want to, like, exceed more than maybe, like, eight side cards for any given matchup. So the hands were really not that necessary. I, like, in theory, they're just good, because this deck is sort of like a one-for-one -one sort of thing, and um, just summoning big creatures. You can summon those big creatures and then just have sort of like the hands out. Like if you have a uh, trap magician, you can just crash your hands into pretty much anything and you just take no damage from it. Uh, three MSTs. Um, they were around, I think. Not a whole lot, but they were. Um, then cited one each of time space and trap tricks. I don't, I can't remember if I cited in the um, second time space. I did side in the second Trap Tricks Nightmare, I think for Teller matchup, and I think I also sided it in for the Ritual Beast match. No, 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 I didn't side it in for Ritual Beast matchup, no. Um, because that's because I can't shit against that matchup. I'm pretty sure I sided it in against Tellers. Um The card in general was still um relatively useful. I managed to stop some stuff with it, um, regardless of whether or not it was one or two. Uh, Iron Wall, side of the sin against Ritual Beast, never saw it because they bricked game two and I basically just ran over the top of them. Actually, no, game two was, game two was relatively tight and I managed to just, um, push over, got over steeds and then basically just ran rampant. So with that out of the way, um, that is the end of this deck list. There is not much of a, there is not really much of a way I can think of to wind this down. Uh, and I'm not going to rack my brain for it because that's just going to keep me awake and I'd rather not do that. So I'm just going to end this by saying blah and something along the lines of see if whatever, whatever it is I do next.